I'm annoyed. Snot was a bad design decision. Yeah. Because I, there's a few things in the blueprint that like when I die, I just want to have a sit down with God and be like, really? What was that about anyway? Like, like, really? Like, what is an appendix and why do we need it? So it, it, it it's uh, I've had a head cold. Don't worry. I don't have the pandemics. Um, I've had a head cold, which the very fact that I've had snot like crazy should be an indicator. Um, it 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 is the stupidest design. It's supposed to be the way we we like. All right, how are they going to get rid of the dust and the dirt and every? I have an idea. They're just going to have this gooey mass of liquid gelatin shit that's going to go right down their throat and out their nose and everywhere, and it's it's going to irritate their throat and make it hard to swallow and talk. And it that's how we're going to do it. Why? Because knife them. I I come to feel like most most of the decisions about our anatomy is comes down to because knife them. <laughs> Made by some very vindictive angels who did not appreciate this project. Because knife them. Hey, guess what? The, the, uh, the, they're going to have these things under their arms that just stink. That just knife and stink. Why? Because knife them. Yeah. Dan has one of those nose flushing things because he has all kinds of sinus and allergy Nettie problems. And, no, it's a navage. It, it like the neti pot you have to do yourself. This one does it for you. Like all he has to do is hold it up to his face. The things go up his nose and it suctions. And like it, it pushes distilled water in and then forces everything back out. And it works. He says it works really well. No. <laughs> that. It's like power washing the sinuses. That gets all the crud out. So anyway, I I I did one of those ex, the body exhausted from sick slept like stupid today, and I hated it. But here we are now, and uh, just dealing with everything. It's been a quieter month. You may have noticed. Yeah. Well, you know, after the you know the the, the the like after last week, things quieted down. It feels like a month says last week, doesn't it? Yeah. Only because of the peace and quiet. It's been like 90%. There are dogs again. <laughs> we have we have dogs again. And one of them's a shelter dog. And they just run around. It's been like 90% less bullshit nice. in general. And it's just been so nice. Yeah. And I've, I've been loving it. Except for Mitch. Well, and Ted. Yeah, yeah, but you know. Nice. Mitch and Ted. Yeah. But they don't really have the reach. That Trump and my, my state elected like if you ordered if you ordered Sarah Palin on Wish, yeah. So we have her night to deal with, yeah. But it's not it's not a fire hose of bullshit all the time, and I, that is really nice. It gives us it gives you room to breathe and regroup and go back and night with the other mother night. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's get the intro going because we've got a collection tonight. Just magic, I would say. Here we go. Hello, come on, come on, do it, do it. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call "What the fuck is wrong with you?" And we're gonna go to Florida just just nail it florida night um it's it feels like nature I, I call this nature is healing because this is exactly our wheelhouse right here um come on gotta get the link there we go get, get fucking oh for fuck's sake copy the entire thing the entire you are out you stupid dick bag I'm cursing out my web browser. What is wrong with me? There we go. Um, starting in Florida. Naked Florida man stole, crashed police car. Ah, uh, the classics. Naked Florida man stole what news footage showed to be a marked police vehicle and crashed it in a wooden area. 
Joshua Shanker, 22, was arrested after Thursday's crash on charges including theft of a motor vehicle, aggravated battery on a law enforcement officer, depriving an officer of a means of communication or protection. I didn't know that was even a thing. And resisting an officer without violence. Okay. Um, officers responded to reports of a naked man running along the Interstate 10 in western Jacksonville shortly after, before noon Thursday. Shanker was lying in the roadway when an officer stopped on the opposite side of the route. I love this. Schenker then ran across the highway lanes toward the officer. He lay in wait. He set a naked trap. He was playing possum. <laughs> With his dick. Um, the redacted report didn't say how Schenker stole the vehicle. Authorities confirmed only that a vehicle belonging to the city of Jacksonville was stolen. First Coast News footage of the scene showed the crashed vehicle to be a marked patrol car. Officers noted Schenker had road rash after the crash. Let's take it to a hospital to be checked out. Uh, that's not naked and road rash. Is that's why you don't crime naked. I just, I love that this dude set a trap, set a madness <laughs> trap. What are you going to do today? I'm going to lay naked in the road. And when the cops come, I'm going to check their car. <laughs> I, I also love that there's a chunk missing here. We don't know exactly how. Okay. I'm pretty sure that dude is trying to figure out how to write that up in such a way that he doesn't look like a complete imbecile. I feel like <clears throat> most men, mm. if there's a naked man running at you, <laughs> your instinct is going to be <laughs> to run instead of fight. <laughs> That's just a guess on my part, but <laughs> men men have men have certain issues with appearing <laughs> of a sexuality that they are not. Oh, go oh shit! There's a dick coming at me. I, I might people might right. question so me. I feel like there's something of a panic that happens when there's <laughs> just like a dick coming at you that you did not ask for. Whereas women are used to that. We get dick we didn't ask for all the time. Yeah. So we're just like, oh boy, another unsolicited dick. Wax on, wax off. Men, like a naked guy come running at you, I feel like there's a level of panic. <laughs> I wonder how they're going to write that up in the police report. The, uh, the officer uh, removed himself from the situation at the site of the phallus. Also, you imagine, I mean, I guess Florida, so these things are normal to them, but like, you're just driving down the road, you're going to get some Arby's or some meth, and there's just a naked guy lying in the road. And you're like, oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's Thursday. Yeah, it's, it's, mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. It's, it's, it's naked Thursday yeah. already. I, I love that he's just a lay in wait. <laughs> He had a plan. He had a stupid <laughs> naked plan. Do you remember in Gladiator? The one guy is telling Joaquin Phoenix, like, there is a certain sea snake that will lie in the bottom of the ocean <laughs> and wait for its predators. And even as they take little bites, still, it will lie very still. <laughs> that wasn't an instruction manual for carjacking. <laughs> well, it was a sea snake of, of a sort. Ah, but wait, someone had to what up their ass. Um, this is Houston. We've had this hat. We, we've covered this happening before, but someone th this one had to add that little cherry on top. That piece de resistance man arrested after stealing amulets going to fast food drive through. <laughs> Police in Texas arrested a man. They say went for fast food in a stolen ambulance. According to investigators, paramedics were working in an apartment complex when the man jumped into their ambulance and drove off. Officials used GPS to track the amb ambulance to a jack in the box. There they found the man ordering food inside of the emergency vehicle. He even had the lights on. <laughs> Needless to say, Sir, um, should arrested. you get your patient to the hospital? <laughs> no, he's gonna. It's fine. He'll make. Just, just give me my my value meal. <laughs> I'm I'm just you could have gone 
you didn't need the car to get Jack in a box. Well, some places, if you walk up to the drive through they get real mad about it. <laughs> so maybe that's the backstory. Maybe they're like, Merle, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. You cannot walk up to the drive through So he was like, I'll fucking show them. <laughs> Dan well, tells a story that when he was in the army, some of the guys took one of the um, armored vehicles through a drive through and wrecked that shit because those things, like regular civilian roads, are not made for those things. Nope. And they murdered a drive through <laughs> Why did... Because <sighs> they were dumb kids in the army. This is... They're going to find the ambulance. Yeah. The, the, it's not one of those things they're just like, well, I guess we're writing that one off. Oh, well. Th they're going to find that. They pretty much all have tracking devices in yep. them now, I think. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's not like you could just, you know, take it and. Also, like, you're sitting in the drive thru with the lights and the siren on. That's suspicious. <laughs> I, I bet you anything he didn't know how to shut them off. Like you're not you're not gonna blend that <laughs> way. He he didn't know how to turn them off. That I would lay money that he's sitting there just like fuck it, I want my burger. <laughs> just push <Three>. it. <laughs> uh I mean it's it points for creativity i Jack's guess it's not even worth it i've never had jack in the box it's not it's it's really not it's a it's it's like a western west coast and i guess now in texas kind of thing and it's it's not we had like one near where i grew up on long island but we never went there and it's 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 nothing nothing to write home it's fucking jack in the box it's not it's not it's not good it's they're not gonna make a harold and kumar movie about it no and even though, though the White Castle wasn't fucking worth it. Yeah, I've never had White Castle either. White Castle is not not it's not good. It's don't 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 believe the hype. Don't don't fucking believe the hype. Well, this guy, I think someone was going for a fucking world record here. And and I the details on this one just killed me. This is a whole bunch of bless your heart. Man runs 12 stop signs, one red light in Altoona police chase. Altoona, okay. Altoona, Pennsylvania. A man is facing char charges after he led officers on a chase while driving under the influence January 21st. Um, Altoona police say 36-year-old Terry Fornari Jr. Drunk and driving on a DUI suspended license when he led officers on a chase after driving away from a traffic stop about 9.30 a.m. Bornari is accused of running 12 stop signs and one red light before he pulled into a driveway and stopped. An officer tackled Fornari as he ran through a yard. Police say Fornari had a can of beer in the front pocket of his coat and there was a case of beer in the passenger seat of the car. The time to run is before they have pulled you over. No shit, right? Because once they have pulled you over, they have your information. Yeah, you're 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 fucked. They have a, your license plate on the dash cam. Like the time to run is before they catch you. Once they catch you, <laughs> fuck it. Twelve fucking twelve stop lines. You know, Baker's dozen. And a, yeah, one red light. Twelve stop signs and a red light. <laughs> that I, I love and, and just like gave up did, okay I love he's got the fucking drink in his coat pocket that is that's classy is what that is that's classy and practical I mean he could keep both hands on the road on the wheel maybe his car just didn't have the headroom for the two can helmet <laughs> Just beer hat in it. Both hands to drive. Just beer hat in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love it that he. Then you're at least going to get the element of surprise on the cops because they're going to be like, "Did that fucker really just? Should we should we chase him? Like they're I, I guess. 
They're gonna put a fucking... And you're already drunk, so you're probably not running that well. Yeah. They're gonna put out an APB on your ass because they've got your car. At that point, running is just... You're just making yourself tired. You're going to yeah. jail tired. That's all you're doing. That's all you're... You're going to jail tired and sweaty. So you're gonna be smelly. Yeah. And, and no one's gonna like you in jail if you're smelly. I mean, maybe that's a good defense from getting beat up. <laughs> if you're slimy and you smell bad, nobody wants to punch you. Yeah. Probably smells all completely of beer. Because when they tackled him, that beer probably went... <laughs> yeah. He was probably sweating beer, too. Because there's a certain amount of drunk where you just, like, you just start sweating booze. It's not a good smell. It's, it's like I don't understand what the what the fuck was the plan? If you look, if you outrun the cops, that doesn't mean you're, the trouble is over. It's not Cyberpunk right. twenty seventy seven. Like, like, oh, you got us right, and that they don't chase you after a mile thing is not true. That's that is not true. They will Especially going. if you have a whole mess of priors. And <laughs> sure. twelve stop signs. You've kind of annoyed them at that point. Yeah. Uh, Maybe he was trying to get to a Wawa because, as I understand it, that's like respawn points in Jersey, Pennsylvania. Like, if you make it to Wawa, you just respawn. Next up, Louisiana. Um, th this uh, this is from the Department of Indiana. Let it go. Um, Staff finds meth in Louisiana motel room disguised in Arizona tea cans. Okay. Staff member at the Sunbelt Lodge in Abbeville, Louis Abbe Abbeville or Abbeville? Anyway, Louisiana called police after finding the remains of methamphetamines that had been left by a former guest. The drugs were inside two containers disguised as Arizona tea cans with false tops. Clever. According to uh, Lieutenant Jonathan Touche, Eight one-ounce packages of meth were located inside the vault's tea cans. Uh, he said after police recovered the drugs and left, they came back when the staff called to report that 28-year-old Paradise Thornton of Lafayette arrived at the motel and allegedly threatened the staff, demanding they return her items. No, I know you know that's suspicious. Threatening people over a couple cans of iced tea. But nobody does it. Arizona iced tea is a dollar a can. Nobody's making that much fuss over it. You're just going to buy another can. So immediately they're like, hmm. The, the, you thought you being slick. Like, yeah. maybe I can go back and get my meth. Maybe if I, but you didn't play it slick. You got all, got all defensive. Yeah. And even still, they found it. Stupid. Uh, Touche said she fled the area. However, video footage obtained led police to her whereabouts. Why would you do this? I know it's eight ounces of meth, but it's eight ounces yeah, of meth. Yeah, I'm sure that's a lot of money you're out. But, but and keep better track of your meth. You know, be more responsible with your drugs. Because you look hella suspicious going in and starting a ruckus over a can of Arizona iced tea. Even if they had not already found it, they're going to start asking some questions. I, why, why don't, do not go back to where you've done the crime. They are mm -hmm. going to be, I mean, at this point, I want to point out, at this point, she was scot-free. Yeah. She was if they didn't have her fingerprints in the system, she was they, they couldn't do shit about it. It wasn't until she came back. They put and two and two to the property. <sighs> hey, have y'all seen my mess? This, this is this is on you more than it's on them is all I'm saying. Um, oh boy. Worst people in the world this week. Holy shit. It's one of these again. Flora saw a couple accused of fake bomb threats 
to preschool in St. Peter's so one could avoid going to work. Free school. Lusant couple. I, 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 just look, the look on her face. You, we all know that. You know that look. Look at that look. Does her face mask say peace? I, I think maybe it does. Her face is saying, I need to speak to your manager, is what that's saying. That That is the, I want to talk to your manager. We've all seen that. If you've worked retail, you know that look. Where is your supervisor? But the, the lips are just that perfect pursing right there. Um, Florissant couple is charged Friday with calling in a false bomb threat to a St. Peter's preschool. Prosecutors, they called, they called in the threats on January 12th, which is already this year. That was a bad time to be doing this. Yeah. Just a few days after, hmm, I wonder. People are, people are a little on edge. And again Thursday. So they did this twice because one of them did not want to go to work at the preschool. This is also a grift you do once. Once. Janet Porzelt, 40, and Evan Hauserman, 39, both of the 2000 block of Parker Road, were charged with two counts apiece of making a false bomb report and two counts apiece of making a terrorist threat. Hauserman made the threats to the Primrose School because Porzelt, an employee at the school, did not want to go to work but still wanted to be paid for a full day. Houserman used an anonymous texting application and a fake phone number to call in the threats. After the first call, the preschool evacuated in 36 degree weather. On Thursday, after the second threat, the preschool evacuated more than 90 people, including infants who had to be rolled in the parking lot in cribs. So school was in set, like it wasn't like she called before they were open. There were nope. a bunch of small children there and she was like, yo, hey, there's a bomb. Both suspects admitted their role, according to charging documents. Police did not say what job Porzelt held at the preschool. I'm sorry that you want the day off, but you want to get paid. I want to live on cheeseburgers and Pepsi and be a size six again. Life is fucking hard. It is. But you, you don't... He, Loki. Was that Loki or Cthulhu? That, that's Loki. He, he's he's okay. a, Loki is he's he's part uh, hound. He's part lab and he's part Muppet. No, um, <laughs> no, it's just this and to do it the, the the audacity. Hey, it worked once. Let's do it again. If you got away with it the first time, you're a piece of shit. But you're a piece of shit who got away with it. That's not a well you go to twice, and just, because it starts to strain credulity. The, the the utter nerve of your ass to see what you what chaos you wrought the first yeah. time, and to be like preschool children. <sighs> you had preschool children standing out in the cold because your ass didn't want to go to work, and they had to panic to get the kids out of there. Like, scared the sh no fucking scared of fucking kids. Astral says, the lion, the witch, and the audacity of this bitch. Yep. And this is not a good... What? Well, how could you have sat through January 6th and thought, you know what? This is a good time to call in a bomb threat. I'm also a little concerned that this person was working at a preschool to begin with. Mm-hmm. Because clearly they don't have good decision-making skills. No. So, like, what was your job at the preschool? Their, their job was getting fired, apparently. What's the hiring process like at that preschool? The, the last one this, this week, everybody here should be ashamed of themselves. Because everyone fucked up. This is a just colossal... It, it's astonishing how badly everyone screwed up here. Um, This is from uh, Gwinnett County, Georgia. Um, Holy shit, this kid. Right, there you go. They sat there. Teen employee accused of stealing nearly one million from Gwinnett Kroger. And that's dollars. That's not pennies. 
Gwinnett County teenager was arrested if authorities say he managed to steal nearly $1 million from the grocery store where he worked. Trey Brown, 19, was taken into custody January 14th after scamming the Kroger on Steve Reynolds Boulevard out of more than $980,000 over a two-week period. According to police, Brown created two more weeks. than Brown created more than 40 returns for non-existent items in December and January. Those returns, which ranged in price from $75 to more than $87,000 were placed on several credit cards. You did you did a 90 grand return at the Kroger and nobody asked any questions? See, that's what I'm saying. Who's spending 90 grand at the fucking Kroger? Police say Brown used the stolen money to buy two cars, clothes, guns, and new shoes. Prior to his arrest, the teen reportedly totaled a Chevy Camaro that he bought. So he bought a, a Camaro and he trashed a Camaro. Investigation. Began after corporate employees from Kroger noted the fraudulent transactions. So here's what happened. This dude, not a bad plan, not a bad scam. Okay. But you spread that shit out. And you got to keep it small. You pace yourself. 87 grand at the Kroger is going to raise some flags. Like you could get away with maybe 50 bucks a week. Yeah. And that adds up. That's you got to pace yourself. Ninety eight, nine hundred eighty thousand dollars in two weeks at a supermarket. Like, like you don't work at Tiffany's, right? <laughs> you work at Kroger. But on the other hand, they let him do it. Yeah, there was no system in place that went. Hold on, one second. It took them two weeks to figure it out. When I worked at Starbucks, I was a little like we had a lot of agency over returns and refunds and, you know, given given someone a free drink for whatever complaint. And they say, like, you know, we trust you to make good decisions. And I was like, that's refreshing, but also concerning. And then one of my friends got a job working loss prevention for Starbucks and was trained in interrogation by a former Mossad agent. <laughs> And I was like, oh, they trust you. And and if you break it, you're fucked. So don't take money out of the till if you work at Starbucks, is what I'm saying. Nine hundred and eighty thousand dollars. How the love of my God, I'm I mean, I'm impressed with this kid that he got away with it for the, the two weeks. Oh, Tara, we, we lost Tara. That's... Oh, there we go, she's back. I, I, I think I've also mentioned before, I worked with a kid at Old Navy who was running a credit card scam. Yep. And the way he got caught, his girlfriend worked at the hospital and she would steal the credit cards and then he would, <laughs> you know, use them. He bought a bunch of stuff at Old Navy on the stolen credit cards and used his employee discount. And I was like, if you're shopping with someone else's money, why do you care? <laughs> what the fuck do you care? Don't be thrifty, motherfucker. <laughs> also, it's Old Navy. Not that expensive. I... And that's how he got caught. Yeah. Loki. That is stupid, Loki. I agree. I will feed you soon. Be good. But I'm hungry now. He's always hungry. I just it that's peak cap. Uh Muthsara says he should have stolen nine hundred thousand dollars worth of scratch tickets. You're not wrong. There has to be a way to track those. Eh, I guess. I don't know if they have to activate those anymore or they, they just they're you know, I don't know how those work because I don't do them, but so yeah, that's that 900. How? F wow. Everyone failed here. Everyone, was, everyone fucked up. Like that's, that's a story that's having the district manager camp out for a while and live up everybody's ass. Yeah. You're, you're in for a bad time after. I mean, 
the you're in for the corporate cavity search it's and not gonna the, the motherfucker bought guns that's trafficking maybe that's well, yeah that's because if you you stolen money to purchase guns that's they don't like that they don't like that at all <sighs> so that that's the first thing we learned this week is apparently no one who worked everyone who works at kroger's was asleep at the switch not a single fuck to be had in the kroger <laughs> to be fa- I mean, d- to be fair you, we've worked retail we got the point where it's like if it ain't your problem it ain't your problem yeah not my circus not my there are certain things where you're like is my hourly enough for this no um no no flutter nutter the kroger wasn't selling guns he, he stole the money from returns from Kroger and then went and bought guns. You see. That would be concerning. Kroger doesn't sell the guns. Walmart. Walmart sells the guns. Walmart yes. sells the guns. Um, <laughs> we've learned that uh, the, the, the preschool, call, if you work at a preschool, probably calling it a bomb threat is, is the, the, the mark that your soul I mean, is dead. No matter where you work, that's a bullshit move. But when what you're dealing place. with literal babies, like, just call it sick. Just like, suck it up. Like, Jesus, I thought I didn't think anyone was going to one up Kellyanne Conway and doing that shit to her daughter with the nudes this week. But this is close. This is close. Did you see Claudia's hostage video today? Oh God, no! But look. Everything's fine. Please leave my family alone while I glance off camera every three seconds to make sure I'm doing okay. Fucking hell. I worry about that kid. Yeah. Um, we've learned that if you if you leave behind your meth, uh you know, let it go. You gotta let it go. Elsa, let it go. Yes. It's it's not coming back there it's yeah, it's a bad plan. Um you can run 12 stop signs, but you can't run from the cops. We've learned that. They're going to keep following. They're not going to give up. You should have just taken your win and just gone home at that point, but no. Um, We've learned that maybe, maybe if stealing an ambulance to go to Jack in the Box, not the best of plans. Maybe. When you're planning a crime... Think about, as they say, whether the juice is worth the squeeze. (laughs) And then finally, we've learned this week that in Florida, you must be careful because the naked lie in wait. Like gators. Like, you know, yeah, you got to be careful going in the water because there might be a gator with just its eyes popping up. Got to be careful walking around because a dick might just pop up anyway. 